Sarah Cavender is an artist, but you could say she's a bit of a scientist too. Seeming to defy the laws of physics, she manipulates tough metals into delicate objects of beauty. Her one-of-a-kind jewelry is in demand around the world, and it's made right here in Alabama. Melissa Bowman takes us inside this artist's studio. First impressions aren't always accurate. For example, you might think Sarah Cavender manufactures industrial parts at her workshop, not beautiful pieces of jewelry. We uh, specialize in um, handcrafted jewelry, primarily made of different types of meshes, industrial wire nets, wovens. People come into my shop and they think I make fences or something. I'm like, no, it's metal jewelry. Sarah has the rare ability to create art from purely functional objects. In her case, that's everything from metals used in heat shielding to fuel filtration. She applies her background as a sculptor to her work, but it was a decision to try a jewelry making class that led to her current path. One of my professors in the sculpture department said, you know, you really have a, a knack for that jewelry thing. And I was a little offended, but because <laughs> I wanted him to you know, wanted to be a talented sculptress. So when I got out of school, I thought, well, let's do some jewelry and see what happens. What happened was Sarah Cavender Metalworks, a successful company that over the last 40 years has developed a full line of jewelry, belts, and handbags. Sarah and her staff of fellow artists hand design everything at a retail store and workshop in charming downtown Oxford, Alabama. What they do with metal is truly amazing. Because it's woven, it is really a fiber, and we're able to manipulate it and treat it in such a way that it can look like lace. But we start with rolls of chain and rolls of screening, and uh, we cut that, uh, we anneal it or heat treat it so that it's malleable and soft, and then um, we solder it. That goes from there through the cleaning process, plating process, uh, hand painting. That process produces one-of-a-kind pieces in a variety of colors and a range of designs from industrial to floral. Those items are then shipped to customers around the world, including many museum shops, like the UK's Victoria and Albert Museum. It's easy to see why Sarah's work has so many admirers. Her creations make you feel like you're not just wearing jewelry, you're wearing a work of art. Every time I wear one of her pieces, it gets a lot of comment. And people will stop me on the street and say, where did you get that? And they can't believe that I say, I got it in Oxford, Alabama, because she's known internationally. Whether Sarah is working with local customers like Pat Kettles or any of her clients around the world, she finds joy in creating for them customized pieces she hopes they will always treasure. People send me notes where people are so complimentary. So you don't realize how important these pieces have become to people. But that makes me feel good. For Simply Southern, I'm Melissa Bowman. Sarah said being a sculptor definitely influences her other art, but she has additional inspiration. In watching her mother sew, Sarah became familiar with the way fabric can be shaped into pleats and other forms. And now she applies those same concepts when shaping metals. If you're interested in purchasing any of Sarah's creations, you can visit her store in Oxford, and she also has a retail website at shopsarahcavender.com. You can search by different types of jewelry, style categories, and color groups. From farming trends to food prices, we'll cover the latest agricultural news and a brand new Rural Roundup coming up next on Simply Sub. What you doing? Just saving Kevin some money by bundling his home in auto coverage. Nice. I wonder what Kevin's doing. <laughs> thing. We've got you covered. I'm Heath Clary from Greensboro, Alabama. I'm proud to be the Alabama Catfish Farmer of the Year. I've been raising catfish for nine years and I've been eating it longer than that. 
From fish fries to taco night, I've tried just about every recipe and they're all great. Because no matter how you cook it, U.S. farm-raised catfish is always going to be fresh, clean, and mild. I make sure of that. Find recipes and restaurants at uscatfish.com. Soybean is a very versatile product. We make crayons out of it. A lot of the combines you see rolling through the fields have a lot of plastic side panels that are made from a soy product. The soybeans that we grow on our farm mostly goes into chicken feed. Soybean production in Alabama employs over 10,000 people. We grow some of the best soybeans in the world. We go the extra mile to make sure when our name is stamped on it, we know it's the best product we can produce. Hey y'all, I'm Kim Earwood with Alabama Ag in the Classroom. Today in Miss Kim's Book Corner, we're sure to have a monstrously good time. In How to Grow a Monster, the main character and his sister help their mom garden. Faced with a second straight year of eating endless zucchini, the siblings try to squash the icky crop. But all their diabolical plans lead to growing a monster. It might sound frightening, but this book has a happy ending, featuring a first place ribbon. And the educator's guide includes seven related classroom activities. To find more accurate ag books, go online to agfoundation.org. Miss Kim's Book Corner is brought to you by Alabama Ag in the Classroom. See you next time.